Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Hope and the Truth. With me on today's show, Nell from King Sword School of Martial Arts and Values. He's going to be discussing his testimony of how he came to Jesus Christ and what exactly a martial arts ministry is. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. As promised, with me in studio, Nell, founder of King Sword School of Martial Arts and Values. He's a brother in Christ doing amazing work for the kingdom. Nell, thank you so much for stopping by today, brother. How are you? Doing great by God's grace. Thank you for inviting me in your program. It's an honor to be with a brother in the Lord and to give a testimony of how awesome and how great our God is. Amen. We have we do have an amazing father. So first thing I wanted to talk about is your King Sword School of Martial Arts and Values, because I know a lot of people out there in the church sometimes don't understand that martial arts can actually be a ministry. So can you explain a little about King Sword, how it started, what you guys do for the community? When I became a, a Christian, I was a martial artist back then. But uh, the church that I, uh, I went to is uh, really focused on the word. So they asked me to give up martial arts, though I've been doing martial arts for a very long time since I was a kid. And then uh, they asked me to give it up. So I, I prayed to the Lord and, you know, I was obedient to my uh, church leaders. So at that time, I gave up martial arts and focused on ministry works for about, about seven years. But after that, the Lord gave back again the martial arts in the form of ministry. I started because when I came back teaching uh, martial arts, because the, the gym that I'm working with asked me to teach kids. So when I was teaching them, so I was also giving them Bible verse and scriptures to, to, to memorize. I was telling them story about David and Goliath and about the greatest warrior ever lived, Jesus Christ who defeated sin and death, something like that. And then the kids would ask me like about those stories. So I would tell them to, you know, to when they get home to the training, they read the Bible. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, the parents approach me after class and then they would say, they would thank me for challenging their kids to read the Bible because they said even them doesn't read the Bible anymore. So it was opportunity to them for them to open the Bible again because their kids are asking them the stories about David and Goliath, about Gideon, about these great warriors in the Bible. And so I saw the opportunity that it is a great opportunity to, to minister and to teach kids about the Word of God. And uh, I was that time, I don't have any idea that was about 2005. I don't have any idea about martial arts ministry, but I have an idea about martial arts and I have an idea about church ministry. But I was thinking that, okay, it could, it could be done. So I started to pray to the Lord, but doing it informally, like just doing like that, to, uh, teach kids and then uh, teach the Bible. And then 2007, I saw a group of American missionaries from Oklahoma, USA. They call themselves American Bushi Dukai Karate Association. They're a group of missionaries, church-based martial arts ministry in U.S. And then they, they perform a demonstration and then they share the gospel. Back then, I was part of a Korean martial arts, Tang Sudo. I'm a black belt in that organization. So I asked them if I could be part of their group. Uh, what is the requirement? And they said, two things needed. You love the Lord, and then you're willing to use your talent for his glory. And I told them I'm in. So, and then I started communicating with them, adapted their, their system of their martial arts. And then uh, that's, that was the formal birth of the King Sword Martial Arts. Because I prayed to the Lord to give me a name that is that he will be glorified. At the same time, it is not too obvious that it's a Christian martial arts ministry. So the word that God gave is King Sword from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, in the full armor of God. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the shoes, with the the gospel, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Because uh, the, the greatest self-defense is the word of God. As it said in John 3.16, that those who believe in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. So that's the greatest self-defense. So the system of King Sword is, although we are in commercial gym, commercial uh, martial arts schools, we are also in public schools and private schools. We handle the program in martial arts. It's part of the training that we 
have a Bible verse after the training because that's what we teach in Kingsort that the Word of God is the greatest of defense and it's up to them if they accept it or not but we shared it just like sharing martial arts teaching them to defend themselves teaching them to exercise to be physically fit and to defend their physical body then I would say let's go deeper than the physical body let's go to spiritual things and the best way to protect our spirit and would give us as eternal life is the word of God. So that's the King Sword that had, that had started in 2008. And at the start, we, uh, we just want to, I transferred at uh, a certain church and they gave me once a week class, so martial arts once a week, and then share the gospel of the words. Then a lot of people came to know Christ. And then a lot of pastors as well became interested. So after about, Three years, we have already 12 locations. And before pandemic, we're overseeing about uh, 30 locations all over the Philippines. It just grew as the Lord leads. And the the black belts that we trained became pastors. And the pastors also became instructors. So that's the, 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 the system. So that's how the ministry started. And now uh, the churches are starting to ask us to... Uh, help them with their youth ministry program by by putting martial arts ministry in their churches and schools. So yeah, so it's a Christ-centered martial arts ministry. Our mission and vision is to impact people's lives using martial arts as a platform in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, becoming champions in the fighting arena and victorious in the arena of life. We partner with different churches and schools to help them in the values formation using the Bible as a basis. And then we have our four four values. The the King is Jesus Christ, is our Lord and our King. The S stands for service to God and His people. So we just want to serve in whatever capacity we can can serve. The W is the Word of God. Uh, We always put the Word of God in, in every training. And then O is obedience in the Word of God. So uh, we also do some uh, benevolent works and uh, evangelism and mission works. And then R is respect to authority in all areas of our lives. Of course, respect to God, respect to parents, and respect to uh, any authorities in the community. And D stands for discipline, devotion to God, and uh, discipleship. So uh, that's the core values of King Sword uh, School of Martial Arts. That's awesome. I, I think it's awesome how. The Lord takes like an interest that we have, because that was something that I always struggled with when I gave my life to Christ was, you know, am I still allowed to do martial arts? But it's so great how the Lord can use gifts that he's given us as a platform to share yes. the gospel. You know, a lot of times mm-hmm. people forget about the, the mission field that's on the outside of the church. And so, mm-hmm. uh, again, sometimes it's individuals that wouldn't come to a service, but they'll hear the word of God from coming to training. And so there really is no limit of how the Lord will use us. It's just us being obedient, willing vessels. So that, that really is a blessing of what you're doing for the community and, and how that programs evolve. And even the time off. I like how you were in martial arts, you served in the ministry, and then it was the combination of both. It's almost like you had experience in each field to then put them together. To be effective. Yes, because um, that's why I realized as well that God tests our hearts first before He will use us. Because mm-hmm. I, I gave up a lot of things became before I, when I became a Christian. Of course, I gave up a lot of friends. I gave up my, my girlfriend. Right. I had a girlfriend at that time who doesn't want me to be a Christian. I gave even I gave up my career. I'm supposed to be a pilot. I took aircraft technology. I did some flying school. But when I came to the Lord, I just serve Him. Uh, in the church, so I didn't pursue that career. And of course, my parents as well was very, really angry with me and sent me out of the house. Then I was able to give up all these things. Then I realized that the hardest, one of the hardest things for me to give up was martial arts. Mm. Because when my pastor at that time asked me to give up the evening training, because I I trained a lot. I, al- I trained almost every night. And then the pastor said, you give all your time into the training. Now you're a Christian. You belong to the Lord. Why do you, don't you just do Bible studies on those nights that you go to the, to the training center? And now because your master right now is Jesus Christ and not the master in martial arts. So then, then I realized, like, wow, it, this is really hard. So I counted the cost. But I said, Lord, if you want me to give up martial arts, then 
I'll give it up for you. So, so that was also the time that I grew in the Lord because I was just doing, I changed my martial arts training into Bible studies mm-hmm. almost every night as well. So, and then yeah, after about seven years, no magic number. I think seven years I, I was serving the church as, as part-time. And then the Lord gave back martial arts as a ministry. And then it grew, and then it became a major ministry right now, helping different churches and helping the body of Christ, using it, it as a platform. So I realized as well that you no, know, maybe dancing or singing or all these things. Because when I when I accepted Jesus, Christ, I said, "How can you use me, Lord? Because I don't have any talent in in singing or even you know, dancing, something like that. So I only had no martial arts, and this is about fighting." But I said, Lord, uh, if you just use me, Lord, whatever you want me to be used. And yeah, I'm so thankful that now I was able to serve him using that what I love to do, <laughs> martial yeah. arts. That's so awesome. God is really awesome. He's really, he's really faithful. Praise mm-hmm. God. So I have a, I've got another question. Let's talk about that time of you know, how you were before and when did you come to Christ? When did you accept him as your savior? So since I was young, I was pursuing three things in life. I want to be accepted. I want to be happy. And I want to have a purpose. So far as I can remember, my life started in martial arts. Like, like you know, something that you really want to do. Mm-hmm. Because it happened in my first tournament. When I was seven years old, I do like informal martial arts. And I was doing a lot of street fight and school fight. You know? um, I'm always in the principal's office when I was in elementary. Then in, in high school, in age 14, I started my formal martial arts. <clears throat> and in the first tournament where people watch you and then people would cheer to you, I felt like this is the purpose of my life. Like I felt accepted. I felt happy. I felt that I have a purpose during that time in the martial arts. So I tried to be the best in it. So I trained really hard. Like, like the, the martial arts gym became like my home. I go there morning and after school, I go there and I train. And, and I just really love it. It's like natural for me. And then I tried everything to become a champion. So, but when I reached the top, like we, when I became national champion in, when I was in college days, so we were like, inter-school champions uh, and black belt champions and all this fame already when, when you come in and people will shout your name, they will cheer on you and everybody is your friend because they just want to be the friend of the champion. But at that time when I reached that, that peak and, and I realized that there's still an empty hole in my heart, like, okay, so I, I've reached the, this is what I want to reach in martial arts. I want to be a national champion. Now I'm here, but there's still emptiness in my heart. I still felt there's an empty hole. So I tried to, you know, look for relationships, like girlfriends, trying to look to put the something to the empty space in the heart. But still, even though a lot of girlfriends already, still there's empty hole, emptiness in my heart. And they said, like, maybe if you have a lot of, if you drink alcohol and you become drunk, then you will feel, you know, you will enjoy life. So I started drinking and became alcoholic. Then, then after that, it's still empty. Went into drugs, so became drug addict. So all these things, you know. So party, because when you go to party house or this house, everybody knows you that you're a martial artist and all of them wants to be, you know, by your side because they feel safe. And, you know, um, and even trying to be, I also tried to be, to have good grades in school. So I, I'm in this, this list there. So all this fame. And that time as well, I did some modeling job. So at the age of 21, I graduated college. Then the school got me as a teacher. So I was in the peak of everything. Like, like when you see me in the outside, it's like the life that, that everybody wants. Mm. Girls here, girls there, friends everywhere. You have the money, you have the fame. But deep inside my heart, there was so, so much emptiness. So much emptiness that... Uh, and I get, because even though we we join tournament, even I, I do alcohol and smoking and drugs, I still win the tournaments. And I would come back home and I would spend the night just thinking about what life is all about. And somebody told me that when you are really in love with someone, then your life will change. You will have a better direction. 
because love is the answer. So I try to put my guards down and, you know, try to love someone. And then when the girl broke up with me, uh, it was really devastating. I, the, the pain was so deep and I just want to commit suicide that time. So for three days, I was in the, just in the, in the beach, in front of the beach, sitting, smoking, drinking, doing drugs, and just thinking about what more can I achieve in life? Because I thought at that time I had have, have achieved everything I wanted to, to feel happy. But there's still emptiness. So three days I was just thinking and thinking and thinking, where should I change? What part should I change in my life? I gotta think of anything else. So at the third, after three days, I was walking in the mall. I said before I would commit suicide, I just wanna walk around the mall, you know, maybe I can have a happy ending if I see my my ex-girlfriend walking and then she would hear about me, you know, um, being sad without her, then she would change her mind, something like that. So walking there and I was thinking, and then I, I haven't seen her. So I said, maybe it's really time for me to die. I think I just, I was thinking what, in what way should I commit suicide? But something came in my mind because I, even though I was an alcoholic and addict, addict that time in drugs, I was religious. I was going to a church, a born again church. There will even be times that I go there then I get slain when the pastor would pray over me and then I would fall down so many times. Maybe because I did party all night on a Saturday and then go straight to the church on Sunday morning. And then, you know, so when the pastor lay over his hand, so I fell, fell on the ground. <laughs> but uh, when I was religious, I was, you know, I believe there's a Lord. I, I, I grew up Catholic. I was, I, we call it uh, sacristan in Catholic. Like uh, it's uh, when you are serving the priest. Like the boy who serves the priest. So um, then I have some knowledge about Jesus Christ and about the Bible. I even have a Bible on my study table. And it's always on the top of all the books. Because you cannot put anything on the top of the Bible because it's the word of God. But uh, maybe read it from time to time, but not really serious in it. But I believe in God. So that time, during the, that time that I was contemplating to commit suicide and walking in the mall, the question came in my mind. I said, but Lord, you don't want me to commit suicide, right? So my question to you right now is, what is the purpose of my life? Why am I even here on earth? Why did you make me? Because uh, it's empty. Like I was achieving everything that I want to achieve, but it's all meaningless. So why am I here? That's the last question in my mind. Why am I here? Amazingly, somebody tapped my back, two girls, who's doing mall evangelism. Mm. They were walking on the mall and inviting people for a Bible study. <laughs> so so I, I got goosebumps because the last question in my mind is, what's the purpose of my life? And then here are, are two girls who is asking me to join their Bible study. And then so I, I, I went with them. And what's funny is the first, the icebreaker question of the Bible study leader is this. He's, in the, in, he's sitting and he said, have you ever been in love? That's the first question. <laughs> I was like, what? He said, what if you will write a love letter to your loved ones because you're going to be out for a long time, but you're going to you're gonna come back. You're going to come back better, richer, smarter, and, but you will come back, and but you'll be gone for a long time. And then you'll be able to given a chance to write a love letter, what will you write in the love letter? I was thinking in my mind, they would write everything, you know, how, how I love her, what's the plan, and uh, how do I want her to live her life while I'm gone. That's all going to be back. And then he said, okay, you're done with the love letter. She was sealed with a kiss. And then uh, when she received the love letter, you give it to her. She received the love letter because it's from you. She kept, she kept it under the pillow. Or she would put it in the altar. So when she wake up, she will see it. Or she would always bring it to her bag so that, you know, because it's, it's a letter, love letter from you. But she have she didn't read it. How would you feel? It was like, oh. And, and then he said, he, he raised his Bible and he said, this is, somebody loves you so much. Uh, he went here. He's been out for years already, thousands of years, but he's going to come back. So he wrote a love letter for you. And he raised the Bible and said, this is God's love letter for you. This is 
how you want he wants you to live your life this is how he wants you to this is are his promises to you and this is how much he loves you have you read the love letter of god to you and that changed my life because from that day on i was looking on the bible as a personal love letter of god to me and it totally changed my life so after that i was reading the bible i was literally i was like on, in my room only for about a week and then just reading the bible and just really consuming it and then uh, a lot of my friends were calling me for a party they would say because i i i love to host a party i would always love to buy beers to people and buy girls to my friends so they they would always want me to be in the party so mm-hmm. that, that that's how party animal i was but that time they would call me and they said Come now, let's have a party, and I would start sharing the Bible to them, and they would tell them, "There's better than beer. There's better than girls. You know, the Word of God will fill our hearts, and there will be a joy that you cannot explain." And all my friends says, "Nah, Nell is Nell is crazy right now, right?" <laughs> and then, uh, so I I committed my myself to the Lord, and I gave up literally the dreams that I have in the world. So uh, that time. Um, when I, I got baptized November 1, 1998. But before my baptism, I took the test for Air Force because I finished aircraft technology. And then I like martial arts, so I want to be a soldier. I want to be an Air Force. And then when the, the letter came, November 10, and then they want me to report to the flying school. So it was a decision-making time. So I fasted and prayed and God is imposing into my heart that he will use me for his kingdom. But at that time, I told God, how can you use me? I didn't go to Bible school. I don't know anything. I know only how to look good because I'm a, I'm a ramp model. I know how to beat up people because I'm a martial artist. Uh, <laughs> And it, my course, like it's about aircraft. So how can how can I use it to minister to people? If you have, I was telling God, if you have reached me out when I was in high school, then I could have been. I, I took Bible school, then I will be a pastor. But I, I told God, how can you use me? But but the impression was really there that He will use me. So I said, Lord, if I give up this Air Force thing, then I will be living by faith because I planned my life already. That time I was 21. I was thinking I'll. Be in the flying uh, air force flying school for four years. So age, and then I'll be serving the government for another four years. So at age of like 28, I will resign and I will apply as commercial pilot. And it's and then people would like a military pilot to be in their commercial aircraft. So everything was planned. Yeah. So I told I told the Lord, Lord, if I give this up right now, then I don't know where I'm gonna be. So but. But again, as I said, you are my Lord, you're my King. So I gave it up. So when I gave it up, even my mother was so angry with me that she sent me out of the house. She was really angry that I gave up all those possibilities. So I went to the church, told the pastor that my mom kicked me out of the house. Then he said, "Okay, you can live in a small room." I end up cleaning up the the the, the church and the the toilet of the church. <laughs> So I said, okay, Lord. But the amazing thing there is, there was so much joy and contentment in my heart, rather than winning the championship national black belt tournament hmm. or getting a medal from the school, being a dean's lister. So there was so much peace and joy of just cleaning the toilet <laughs> for the Lord in the church. Yeah. And cleaning the floors in the church, so I, I became like a you know a clean a cleaner boy in the church, and then I would look at the pastor and how he preached, and and I would talk to him afterwards, teach me about the Bible. So that's how it started, and then he took me as a part-time worker at the youth ministry. So and that's how I became a Christian, and that's how God changed my life. So yeah, and God. Was so faithful that even right now when I look back, I, because I was like I was thinking like maybe if I continue doing this serving the Lord, maybe I will not have a family anymore. I will not marry anymore. I will not have a car. I will not have a house. But it's okay as long as I have the Lord, I'm okay with it. Maybe yeah. I will not be able to travel in other countries anymore because I was thinking like okay, I'm I'm okay with it as long as I have the Lord. And I was really happy in my heart, and I was telling all my friends that there is so much joy that will be found in the Lord. So, but God was faithful. Uh, now I have I have a beautiful wife. I have a daughter. We have the church. We have we have a car. We have a house, 
And now I have a friend named Lance Fargin. That's <laughs> me. Lance. Yeah, Thank so God is really amazing and connecting me with a lot of people around the world and doing ministry and being connected with a lot of Christian martial artists around the world, literally. So there was one ministry that really gathered all the Christian martial artists from around the world, and I was one of it. I was attending Philippines, and I would, and we are, we are called in a meeting in Istanbul, Turkey, like, and all expense paid. Mm. And I was meeting with all these Christian martial artists from around the world. So God was really amazing. I remember a verse right now in Jeremiah 33.3 that says, Call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you cannot even imagine. So that's that's what I saw. Uh, and one more verse that I can remember right now is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything will be given to you as well. Because I had experienced that in my life by trusting in the Lord. And he is really, really, really faithful. And he's a really, really good father. He's amazing. God is good all the time. And, and that's the message that all of us Christians wants to get to, to people around the world. Because a lot of people are looking for joy and contentment in life and looking it in wrong places. But we have Jesus Christ. Before, the most saddest and loneliest time of your life is when you're alone. But now, that's the best time when you're alone because you're going to spend time alone with God. You know that you are never alone. The best time that it's only you, then you know God is there. And you can always sing songs of praise, read the Bible, talk to Him. And there's so much joy. And that's the message that I want to share. Even I know that this podcast will, would reach a lot of people. And that's the message that I want to share even to the young generation, the young people that looks for joy and fun and contentment, the real joy and contentment and peace could only be found in Jesus Christ. And I can tell that by experience. Greater than winning any championships uh, I like is having Christ. Amen. I like what you said about how it reminds me of uh, when Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, but also in my own life, that you we try to fill this void that we feel where it's like the grass is always greener there's something else and you realize it's nothing in this world it's christ that what we're all looking for no matter what vice we fall into or where we're at you know it's it's a privilege and a blessing and very humbling to be able to share the gospel with people from any walk of life because we even though some of our experiences are different we have a lot of similarities and you start seeing that everyone's testimony points people to christ He's the great physician. So it's 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 awesome to get that message across and really to see what the Lord's done in your life, you know, to, to say like, Lord, I'm willing to give it up because you know the beginning from the end and then see that what you think you gave up, you lost nothing of how he literally yeah. uses everything to glorify him and edify Christ. It's amazing. It really is, a, it really is an awesome, an awesome Amen. thing. Thank you so much for sharing. What is the best way? for people to get a hold of you for a King Sword School of Martial Arts and Values? How can they get a hold of you? Uh, the best way right now is Facebook. Like it's easy to send messages, best messenger. So my Facebook name is Neljon Astudillo. Or there we also have a page in King Sword, King Sword School of Martial Arts Davao. So, and also my cell phone number is 0920-948-9973. Again, it's 0920-948-9973. And I'll put and the link to Lance. Yeah. We'll you put the link. Yeah, we'll put the link in the in the podcast so people can actually click on the link. It'll direct them to your site so they can contact you directly. If they have questions or they want to sign up for classes, it really is a blessing what you're doing for the community. Brother, thank you so much for stopping by today. Hang with us for a second. We're just going to go to commercial real quick. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's show. I want to thank Nell for stopping by from King Sword School of Martial Arts and Values. What a blessing. His story of how he came to Christ, of how that empty void can only be filled with the Lord. And uh, really, it really gave me a great outlook and just encouragement in how any of our gifts can be used for the kingdom. When we show up to the Lord, he'll use us as long as we're a willing vessel. So thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, God bless. God bless.